The Picorna viridae form a virus family which contains many important human and animal pathogens and has played an important role in the development of modern virology. The most serious human disease caused by a Picorna virus is poliomyelitis and is probably one of the oldest recorded diseases. Because it causes such a serious disease, poliovirus is the best studied of the picornaviruses. Research has produced two effective vaccines that are used throughout the world in bringing the disease under control. The virus spreads from person to person primarily via the fecal oral route. For example, poor hand washing after using the bathroom allows the virus to remain on the hands. But the greatest risk for poliovirus outbreaks lies in unclean drinking water and sewage disposal facilities, predominantly found in developing countries. Poliovirus enters the body through the mouth, infecting the first cells it comes into contact with in the throat and the intestine. It eventually penetrates the intestinal lining and is absorbed into the blood and into the lymphatic system. Once the virus enters the bloodstream, it becomes a viremia and is widely distributed throughout the body. Poliovirus particles are spherical and with a diameter of about 27 nanometers are amongst the smallest viral human pathogens. The particles are simple and lack a lipid envelope. The polyoparticles are made of a protein shell, the capsid, which serves as a protective code surrounding the naked genome. The polyogenome is a single positive-stranded RNA molecule and it consists of about 7,440 nucleotides, which means it's a rather small one. This is the poliocapsid at atomic resolution and we can see that it is composed of four structural proteins. VP1, VP2 and VP3 on the outer surface and VP4, which lies on the inner surface. The structure of the capsid is icosahedral and the proteins are arranged in protomers. Protomer is the basic building block of the poliovirus capsid. Each protomer contains one copy each of VP1, VP2, VP3 and VP4. This arrangement facilitates the stability of the virion. Furthermore, the surface of the virus has a corrugated topography. A deep depression like a canyon surrounds the protrusions at the five-fold and three-fold axis of each protoma. This canyon serves as the receptor binding site. Viruses initiate infection of cells by first attaching to receptors on the host cell membrane. Different types of cell surface molecules can serve as cellular receptors for picornaviruses or other viruses. For polio, a single type of receptor is sufficient for entry of the virus into cells. The poliovirus receptor, or PVR for short, makes contact with the virus only through domain 1. It docks on the canyon of the virus and it leads to major conformational changes in the particle. As a result, a pore is formed on the capsid and the cell membrane. Through this opening, the viral RNA is transported into the cytoplasm. It is not known if uncoating takes place at the plasma membrane or within endosomes. But eventually, the poliovirus RNA is released into the cytoplasm. A genome is a blueprint which codes for the viral proteins and contains the RNA signals for its own replication and packaging. But let's first have a closer look at the poliovirus genome. Looking at the 5' prime end of the positive-stranded poliovirus genome, we see that it lacks the cap structure of a normal cellular messenger RNA. Instead, it is linked to the viral protein VPG. 
After the VPG, we find an untranslated region. The 5' end untranslated region of poliovirus contains an important sequence called the internal ribosome entry site, or IRES for short. Its purpose is to promote internal binding of the ribosomal subunit. Following the untranslated region, we find the protein coding region of the genome. The first part, indicated as P1, codes for the structural proteins of the virus. The subsequent parts, P2 and P3, code for the non-structural viral proteins. Another important RNA structure worth looking at is found in the P2 region. This is a cis-acting replication element, or CRE for short, and it will play an important role during replication. Finally, at the 3' end of the genome, we find another untranslated region, and at its 3' end, a poly-A tail. We will soon find out that during its cellular life cycle, the poliovirus genome engages in many protein-RNA interactions. These interactions have been the subject of numerous studies during the past two decades. Although many important discoveries have been made in this field, many details of these processes are not yet understood. So we're going to look into some of the most prevailing current theories. Once inside the cytoplasm, the single-stranded positive genome can serve as messenger RNA and be immediately translated into viral proteins. For normal translation to begin, ribosomes bind to the 5' terminal cap structure of a cellular messenger RNA. The poliovirus genome lacks such a structure, hence it needs to employ another strategy, the IRES. Upon entry of the RNA into the cell, cellular proteins cleave the VPG. Then the viral RNA can be used as a template for translation. First, the ribosome subunits, with the help of cellular proteins like PCBP and the translation factors, bind to the IRES. As soon as the complete ribosome reaches the initiation codon, translation can begin. Each ribosome translates the open reading frame of the genome in one long pass, producing a polyprotein. This polyprotein must be cleaved into its individual components for replication to start. First, the 2A protease autocleaves, and thus separates the structural protein precursors from the non-structural ones. Some of the cleavages are co-translational, in other words, they take place while the ribosomes are still translating, thus generating immediately active viral proteins. Eventually, and at different stages, all the polyprotein products will be cleaved into individual proteins or protein precursors with various functions and properties. For example, 3C is a proteinase and 3D is the polymerase. But the two of them together also form the 3CD, which is a proteinase with different properties and essential for RNA synthesis. The 2A protease also has the task of cleaving one of the translation factors, which bind the ribosome to the messenger RNA. For an IRES-dependent translation, as with polio, this creates no problems, but it makes CAP-dependent translation impossible. These cellular proteins cannot be used anymore for the cell's own protein synthesis. Consequently, there are more ribosomes available in the cell to translate the viral RNA. Another way in which the cellular environment is dramatically modified to support viral infection is by the striking rearrangement of cellular membranes and the creation of double membrane vesicles. Virus-induced compartments and membrane rearrangements like these vesicles are thought to serve as a scaffold or generally a site to support virus replication. As soon as enough proteins have been produced, RNA synthesis can begin. The same RNA template is used for both protein synthesis and minor-strand RNA synthesis. 
The problem which needs to be solved is how does the viral polymerase, traveling in a 3' end to 5' end direction on the template, avoid collisions with ribosomes translating in the opposite direction? It's believed that the switch from translation to minor strand RNA synthesis occurs when a critical concentration of viral translation products accumulates in the infected cell. Let's see what happens. The viral protein 3CD Pro is a critical component of the ribonuclear protein complex which forms on the clover leaf structure at the 5' end of the viral RNA. Binding of 3CD Pro at this site displaces the PCBP bound to the IRES, thus preventing further initiation of translation of viral proteins. At the 3' end of the viral RNA, cellular poly-A binding protein PABP binds to the poly-A tract. The RNP complexes at each end of the molecule interact with each other so that the RNA becomes effectively circularized. The viral RNA is now ready for negative strand RNA synthesis to begin. The viral hydrophobic protein 3AB, precursor of the VPG, is anchored on a vesicle. VPG has a tyrosine residue, which is important for RNA synthesis. Initiation of both negative strand and positive strand RNA synthesis require VPG, but according to a recent model, the two processes are differentially primed. For minor strand RNA synthesis to occur, the viral protein 3CD Pro binds to both the 5' end clover leaf RNA and the 3' end untranslated region. Then, 3CD and 3AB are cleaved to release the VPG and the polymerase 3D. The tyrosine hydroxyl of VPG appears to prime negative strand RNA synthesis on the 3' end poly-A tail of the template. According to this model, after the 3D pole starts copying the template RNA into a minor strand, the elongating polymerase may destroy the protein-RNA interactions within the 3' terminal ribonuclear protein complex. That event would prevent further minor strand RNA synthesis. Then another ribonuclear protein complex containing more 3CD Pro is formed at the Cree RNA hairpin, interacting with a 5' end. With further protein cleavages, more VPGs have become available. A conserved structure on the Cree element will serve as a template for the polymerase 3D pole to add use on the VPG. This is called uridylation of VPG, and it may happen recurrently to produce a reservoir of uridylated VPGs. The ongoing VPG uridylation is thought to be terminated by the elongating polymerase reaching the Cree element and causing once again the breaking of the RNP complex. When the polymerase completes the minor strand and there is a big enough reservoir of uridylated VPGs, positive strand RNA synthesis can begin. Each complex of uridylated VPG and 3D pole is translocated to the 3' end of the minus genome. There, the U residues of the uridylated VPG hybridize with the 3' terminal adenosine residues of the negative RNA template. Finally, each polymerase continues copying the minor strand, creating a replicative intermediate. This model explains how both positive and negative poliovirus genomes found in infected cells have a VPG covalently attached to their five prime ends. But most importantly, it explains the observed asymmetry between minus and plus strands in poliovirus infected cells. The ratio of plus to minus strands has been found to be between 20 and 50 to 1.
Each minor strand serves as template for the synthesis of many plus strands. In the later stage of infection, both transcription and translation will be occurring at any one time on different RNAs. The whole infection is a tightly regulated and efficiently controlled process. Even at the early stage of infection, when the first structural proteins are cleaved, the first assembly intermediate, the 5S protomer, is formed. At this point, this is an immature structural unit. Five protomers will then assemble to form another intermediate, the pentamer. Pentamers can further self-assemble to form an empty capsid. A huge pool of capsid proteins is available long before sufficient numbers of nascent RNA is produced. The picornavirus encapsidation process is a highly specific one and only positive stranded RNA with VPG is encapsidated. Finally, the mature virions make their way to the plasma membrane and exit the cell via lysis. Now the virions are ready to infect new cells. <laughs>